All right. Welcome in to In the Pulpit. Today, we have an alert. We are asking the question to you, the listener. Is something very big about to happen that will change the world as we know it? We'd love to hear from you and your comments on this very question. Enjoy the program, and let's pray one for another, my friends. Well, certainly. I mean, we, you know, as these programs are playing on television, this thing will be revving up to the most powerful experiments ever conducted on the face of the earth. They are literally going to accelerate hundreds of millions of protons inside of the tubes that you can see there behind us to just beneath the speed of light. Then they're going to compress them down to a human hair's width and they're going to collide as many as 600 million particles per second. This has never happened on Earth before, unless maybe it was when God spoke and brought all these particles together the first time uh, around. So, yeah, there are, there are some physicists concerned. They, they, there's been fears that we might open up some kind of a black hole. Uh, and yet, that's actually kind of what they want to do. And we can talk about that during the program. They want to open a black hole, and they want to see if they can send gravitons through it to communicate with the other side. People listen. These people are messing with something they do not understand. A lot of scientists that started working on this project, they backed away and they said, you know what, if you turn this thing on full power, we do not know what's going to happen. Number one, this thing could literally create a black hole. When those particles get to spinning, it creates such a humongous pneumatic, uh, magnetic field that from what I understand, it could literally put a hole right through the center of the Earth right through the center of where it's sitting. Put a hole right through the center of the earth. It could start a black hole that we can't stop. And the scientists tell them, hey, this could happen. And you know what they think? Well, it probably won't, so let's go ahead. Who are these people? I mean, this thing could destroy the entire planet, and they just think, well, let's turn it on. You never know. Yeah, the, the Higgs boson, the God particle that Zach mentioned, is one of the particles they're looking for. They're looking for quarks. They're looking for gravitons. They're, they want to know, uh, you know, how did God put this all together, and can we take it apart? The, the Shiva deity that they've got, you know, uh, right outside the main offices there at CERN, right. that's what it does. It does the cosmic dance. It's happening right now. While you're sitting in this auditorium, it's in CERN, Switzerland. Now, you may not be aware of what's going on over there, but there's a thing over there that's called a Large Hadron Collider, and it is an accelerator. It accelerates particles and then brings them to the point of collision. So this Large Hadron Collider was started up just a few days ago, and it's still in the initial process of being brought online completely. You say, what in the world does something like that have to do with me and the Bible? It has a lot to do with you and the Bible. I cannot and will not attempt to speak as a physicist. It would make me look like a fool. My purpose this morning is to try to be a liaison between them and you. It's to try to take what's going on in that collider and break it down where I can understand it and I can give it out so you can understand it to where it makes an application to your life and to this world as we know it today. For what is happening in that collider is an astounding thing. So I want to read something to you this morning from what's called a theoretical physicist. This man, his name is Stephen Hawking. He's well known throughout the world. Anyone that has anything to do with nuclear energy or has anything to do with physics knows this man and he is one that some rate even on the level of Einstein and uh, of that level and so I'm going to read to you what this man has to say about what's happening right now in CERN Switzerland listen carefully these are the words of Stephen Hawking A 
this point, uh, I'd like to read his words to you. They've actually got them posted. Uh, particles that accelerate to ultra high kentric energy levels bang them into a target. All sorts of estrotic things happen, create new particles, reproducted by theory, or to examine their behavior. Each particle accelerated to 7 TeV, that's trillion electron volts, 99.9% .9 speed of light, May 13 TeV, then September the 23rd, full power, 14 plus TeV. Remember, TeV means trillion electronic volts. This is dangerously high. This is what Stephen Hawkins said, my friends. He recently warned the reactivation in March of CERN's Large Hadron Collider could pose grave dangers to our planet. The ultimate reality, check, we are warned. Hawking has come straight out and said the God particle, and this is what you've heard referred to time and again as the Higgs boson particle, the God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. Now let that settle in. This man is an atheist, and he says there is no God. Yet he says that what's happening right now in CERN, Switzerland, and I'll give you what they're trying to do in a moment, what's happening at this very minute in CERN, Switzerland, has the potential to destroy the universe. This is a theoretical physicist. Now, physicists come in all kinds of sizes. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has also sounded the alarm in a hypothetical manner by telling anyone who might want to blow up a planet how to do so is this CERN's attempt to do so by attempting to recreate the Big Bang within a man-made structure. This has frightened Stephen Hawking so much. Do they know that they know that they know what they are doing. And that's sort of the stage we're at right now. We're getting closer and closer. We think it looks very much like the Higgs, but we're not sure yet. We need to get a little bit closer to be absolutely certain. Ask yourself, how much energy is keeping it together? Neil deGrasse Tyson told co-host Eugene Merman on his Star Talk radio show, then you put more than that amount of energy into the object, it will explode. Now, now, I think I've got your attention. I've quoted two physicists. These are scientists. These men do not agree with what's happening in CERN, Switzerland, right now. There is a 17-mile-long accelerator that lies 300 feet beneath the surface of the ground. This area is where France and Switzerland come together. So part of this accelerator is located in France and part of it in Switzerland. A large portion of CERN is located in the territory of St. Genus Poli. In Roman times, it was called Apollyacum. The town and the temple were dedicated to Apollyon, the destroyer, Shiva, or Horus. The very city that, that CERN is sitting on is the ancient temple to the god Apollyon. Here we have in CERN, Switzerland, a huge wheel. Inside that wheel is a Hindu god, and his name is Shiva. He does a dance of destruction inside that wheel, and his purpose is he is one of the triad gods, one of the greatest gods of Hinduism. Shiva, 
Vishnu and Brahma. Brahma is the god of creation. Vishnu is the god of preservation. But Shiva is the god of destruction. The way the Hindu sees it is that when Shiva destroys, it's not for the purpose of annihilation. He destroys so that Brahma can come and recreate. So now when the Hindu, since they're scientists to CERN, they put this out there in front. And so what these people are doing with the collider is destroying what comes together, but for the purpose of recreating and find out what brought it into existence to begin with. Are you following me? Now here we have men that are scientists on an average of an IQ of anywhere from 160 to 200 or even above. These are some of the smartest brains in all the world. No, that, no question about it whatsoever. I pick up physicists and try to read some of this stuff. I think, didn't I? Forget me. That's for, a, that's for a brain that is wired that way. No question. But we were told when Darwin's theory of evolution came out and became vogue, that it would destroy the foundations of Christianity. And this old book that we hold in our hands, this old outdated Bible, would no longer be relevant. And a lot of people bought into it. Because after all, Darwin is scientific. But it's an amazing thing now that 150 years later, we have some of the greatest scientists in the world that are becoming very religious. Because here they've got Shiva, they've got dances to Shiva, and they are definitely being connected with Shiva as they're finding things. Let me give you one example. In one of their collisions, when they collided these particles together, they saw things. They were apparitions. They didn't expect to see and they didn't fit in any model. They didn't fit anywhere. They don't belong, but they, they could not deny the reality of it. Something was going on inside there that they could not explain. And it was scary for them. For the scientist has his paper and his pencil and his books. And if it doesn't fit in his paper and his pencil and his books, it's out the window. They don't understand. They have a hard time accepting the fact that there is a spirit world out there. That spirit world was created by a spirit being. An almighty, eternal, absolute being that is from everlasting to everlasting. Who put in me what I am today by the power of Almighty God and by the power of the new birth. I want you to think about what I'm saying. Stephen Hawking and a theoretical physicist has warned these people. You are about to open Pandora's box. And once you open Pandora's box, you cannot put Pandora, you cannot put back in what came out of that box. Maybe it was just a coincidence. I mean, a name is just a name, and a number is just a number, and a number is just a number, and a number is just a number. You're reaching now.
and what you've created here is incredible. They just cracked interdimensional travel. All exhibit unique physical conditions. I just want to fix my friends. You can't fix this. You should use these powers to help people. You open the door. You don't know how to close. You open the door. You open the door. You don't know how to close. You don't know how to close. Be ready for what's coming. What is coming? The answers. Be ready for what's coming. What is coming? The answers. The answers. You open the door. You don't know how to close. You don't know anything about what's coming. What is coming? Doom. What is coming? Doom. You open the door. You don't know how to close. You open the door. You don't know how to close. Speed and stamina, far beyond that of any human. You could use those gifts in a war that you are already a part of. You cannot save the human race. Nothing can stop their demise. point i'd like to ask you my friend what do you think is something coming that is going to change this world as we know it starting now in the month of september today's date september the 14th 2015 what do you think is this the month that changes everything in history as we know it is this the beginning of the end we'd love to hear your opinion on it be sure to drop your comments in the comment box. And thank you for listening to In the Pulpit, A Alert.
That seems not normal. Opened a dimensional vortex. Just don't throw anything into it. Life Force has sent real life video games to attack us. Pac Man's a bad guy? Incoming! Donkey Kong. All right, guys, I hope you got the point. I hope you listened to the program. The question is, is this the month? Is this the year? Is this the beginning of the end? Thank you for stopping by right here at In the Pulpit. This has been a special alert. Hey, I'm an evangelist called by God trying to stir up the gift that lies within you. If you're born again, bath in the blood. We'd love to hear from you. Is this the month? 914 is today's date, 2015. Have things begun to change? Let us know. Be blessed. We'll see you next time right here at In the Pulpit.